I'm making this recording for people who are not familiar with Photoshop or may, who may have a little familiarity with how to uh, do some of the things with filters that are helpful in printmaking. In printmaking, uh, lithography and screen printing in particular, uh, when you're doing um, processes that require digital or photo images for output onto film in order to burn your plate or screen, you need to make an image file that is black and white. There can be no gray. Uh, is if you want to imitate gray by having halftone dots or bitmaps, uh, that's fine. Uh, but you need a black and white image. So I'm just going to go through a few things here uh, to help with that <clears throat> that process. And you just have to experiment um, in order to um, learn what you're doing. Hopefully this will help you get started. The image you see here is a finished lithograph that is printed in two colors. It's about 22 by 28 inches and it was run in an edition of around 30 prints. The uh, first color of the print uh, looks like this. I'm printed on white paper. Obviously I added a red plate and in order to make that red plate uh, I, add, I made a plate that looks like this, and then that was printed in red on white paper. So this was the first color that was run. I printed the lithograph in black and white on top of it, and this is the resulting color print. Now this print came from a drawing. Uh, this is the original drawing uh, that was done in pencil and different um, drawing materials including rapidograph pen and prismacolor and pen and ink and all sorts of things onto a, a vellum film. And then uh, when I made this drawing I didn't intend to make it into a print. It was an afterthought. In order to do so I couldn't just put this on the plate because not all of it was um, opaque enough to, to stop the light from going through the plate. So are going through the film, so I had to make a uh, film out of it. And um, so I scanned the image, I tiled it together in Photoshop, and I ended up with a digital image. I suggest when you have something that's detailed like this, you scan it at a fairly high resolution. You scan it in black and white uh, in order to save your file size. You're going to convert it to black and white anyhow. If you have a color image, you want to convert it to a grayscale uh, before you start just to save on your file size. So that's what the starting point is. I'm going to show you some filters uh, and some procedures. Uh, before going to any filters or any other uh, place, after converting it to grayscale, uh, I <clears> think <throat> it's helpful to go to levels and when you go to levels you can move these sliders around to, uh, in this case on the right, you're going to cut your, you're going to clip your whites. So you're going to get rid of the more you move this slider to the left, the more of the uh, faint tones are going to disappear and get clipped. Uh, same thing over here on the left, moving this left slider is going to clip the black tones. And then this mid-tone slider in the middle uh, you can use to, for final adjustments. So do that first, uh, and that will clean up your image quite a bit and make it easier to uh, uh, move ahead to the next step. And in this case, I wanted to convert it to a uh, inverted image, and there's two ways to do this. One is to go to Photoshop up here under Image and Adjustments. It's not showing up right now because uh, of where I'm at, but if you go to Adjustments, you can come down here to Invert and select Invert. And the other way to do it is to go down here to Gradient Map, which is what I'm uh, showing you on the other screen and click on gradient map. So here this is the screenshot of uh, the gradient map app, uh, applying it. I've selected black and white as my gradient uh, and I've um, selected uh, solid for the gradient type and smoothness is at 100% and I've selected uh, reverse because I want it to be inverted and hit OK. And this is a, uh, a shot of, of what happened towards the end. I'll come back to this. Okay. So here's some more filters. Um, 
in order to get to these, I think it's helpful to go to your filter. You want to go up here to your filter gallery and you want to convert the image to smart filters. By doing this, then you can apply all sorts of smart filters in your filter gallery without um, going backwards. So go ahead and convert your image to filter galleries. I think it's a good idea to always work off of a copy from your background. So you take your background image uh, over here in your um, uh, layers. You always have a background image at the, at the bottom. Go ahead and, and make a copy of that up here in your um, layers. Just duplicate that layer and then you can work off of that layer. In this case, I've got several layers. Um, I've made uh, background copies three times and have done different applications of filters in each three of these layers so that I can play around and, and uh, see what each one does. So this is one layer, this is another layer, and this is a third layer. And then that's my original drawing. Okay. Um, so you're never stuck with it. You can always make another copy of your background <clears throat> uh, just by duplicating that layer. And then you can um, take that layer. You can name it if you want to. You can take that layer and you can convert it to smart filters. And then after it's converted to smart filters, you go to the filter gallery. And this opens up. In this case, it's on torn image, and I can work with my in my balance here, uh, contrast, that kind of thing. You can zoom in and out. If you want a little further away, you can do that. Down here, it tells you what size it is. It's 50%. And um, when you're happy with it, click OK. In this case, uh, I might want to invert it from here. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments. And, um, oh, I can't convert that because it's a smart image. Okay. Uh, I could do that up here in a filter. I can invert. All right. So um, back here, this is, again, torn edges. Um, this is um, poster edges. There's a lot of filters. Uh, I'm showing you just a few of them edges again, accented edges, stamp is a good one, um, a copier effects are, are often helpful. This is a cutout filter, ink outlines filter, and torn edges again. Okay, so, um, you know, this is uh, hopefully going to help you out in working with your images to obtain something maybe unexpected and fun. And that's all for now. Uh, when you're done, save it. Uh, you can save one copy as a Photoshop, but then you can go ahead and flatten it. And uh, if you save it as a Photoshop file, it will preserve all your layers. So if you want to go back later, you can, you can do that and you can play with your image. And then uh, also save it as a flattened image. Um, if I go back here just to show you how to do this, you're going to go Save As, uh, and then when you hit Save As, you can um, do whatever you want with it and retitle it and save it. Um, and so you want to go ahead and flatten the image. Um, up here, I'm going to flatten it when I'm done, and then I'm going to um, save it as, oops, if you save it as a new file, your old file will still be there. So I'm just going to teach it, uh, save it as an image. Okay, and um, hit save. And now I have, I still have that first image, and then this is my flattened image, which is a, a lower. And then you can also um, go up to image size. You can go through here. There's I've used a shortcut. It's, it's helpful to use to learn the shortcuts for things you're going to use a lot. Image size, canvas size, um, adjustments levels, those kinds of things are things you use a lot. Um, right now I've got a resolution of 300. My, you want to set your document size at the size you want it printed. And the resolution 
Um, I, I would go with 300. Um, that, that's good. Uh, you don't need to um, go any less than that. Now with a, um, if I wanted to make this image, let's say uh, 20 inches by 20, 20 inches about, I could do that and it's going to preserve everything and it's still going to be 300 dpi. Um, what else? It, I don't need to bitmap this because it's all black and white. So I'll show you, I'll show you how to do that in another video. Okay. Um, I think that's, I think that's it for now. Bye-bye.